All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine a real humdinger of a problem. Let's examine 95A. This has us doing oh so many variances. We're doing material variances, labor variances, variable overhead variances, and fixed overhead variances. Every type of variances, every type of variance we've looked at this module and uh, all in one tidy package here. Let's go. Chemco produces chemicals for cleaning pools. It sells the chemicals, a powder, in four kilogram buckets. The company's standard costs per unit follow. So there's our material, labor, and overhead, and these are all standards. Okay, so when I'm looking for SQ and SP and those types of things, this is where I will look. It says during the month the company produced a thousand buckets. That's the actual output. It's often a useful number to know. Uh, and the following information is known. And it looks like there's some actual information about materials. There's some actual information about labor and there's some actual information about overhead both variable and fixed in there and then it goes on and kind of breaks down more overhead information we'll worry about that when we get to overhead but let's do the material and labor variances first so it asks us for the materials price and quantity variance so let's begin there and we know we need two different prongs here to do it one for the material we purchase one for the material we use and let's figure out what we actually paid for any materials purchases we purchased 5500 kilograms at a total cost of 21,540. so we know 5500 kilograms is the aq we also know the total i've forgotten the number now 21,450. i might have said 540 21,450. And so we can figure out a cost per unit of cost per kilogram. My, my handwriting's falling apart here. 21,450 divided by 5,500 gives us a cost of 3.90, right? $3.90 per kilogram. Okay, there we have uh, the first step. Now, AQ remains the same, 5,500. Our SP, let's scroll all the way up is four dollars per kilogram so 5500 times four gives us twenty two thousand dollars i can see these are apart there is a variance here of five hundred and fifty dollars we got to determine is it favorable or unfavorable well i should have spent four dollars per kilogram on material i actually spent 390 i saved 10 cents uh this is favorable i saved some money here Moving over to the materials used, let's see if we can figure out how much material we used. The next bullet point, bullet point two says, company had no beginning inventory and had 700 kilograms of material on hand at the end of the year. So we bought 5,500, we had 700 left over, we must have used 4,800, just the difference. 5,500 minus 700. So 4,800 is our actual quantity used. Our standard price remains four. 4,800 times four gives us $19,200 in uh, this prong of our calculation. Our SP remains four. Our SQ we always have to work for. Remember, SQ is given the actual number of output, uh, actual level of output or actual number of units produced, how much uh, material should we have used? So given that I made a thousand buckets of the chemicals, uh, how much material would I expect to have used? Well, a thousand times five, I would have expected to use 5,000 kilograms of material. How many kilograms did I use? Well, we'll see. We would have expected though to use 5,000 given the actual level of output. That would be 20,000 on this prompt. Now, I would expect it to use 5,000. I only used 4,800. 
this is good. This is means we used a lesser quantity than we expected. Again, we were less wasteful than we would have guessed before the year started. We saved $800 here. This is favorable. So overall, we have two very favorable materials variances, $805.50. This gives us $1,350 favorable in terms of our materials variance. So scrolling up, there's a little sub question here the company recently entered into a contract with a new supplier who is eager for their business should the company continue to work with this new supplier or should they look for a new one this seems great to me i would absolutely they, not only did they save me money but apparently i used their material more efficiently maybe it's a higher quality material no i would absolutely stick with this supplier very favorable variances let's do our labor rate and efficiency variances now uh, the labor workforce, so I'm looking at the actuals here, worked 220 hours and was paid 2640. Okay, so they worked, so I'm looking now at labor variances all on one prong. 220 uh, DL hours. And we don't know uh, what they get paid per hour, but we're given the total so we can work backwards and figure that out. The total is 2640. So 2640 divided by 220 gives us 12. We paid our direct labor workforce $12 per hour. Um, AQ remains 220. My goodness, my writing is so bad. 220 hours, let's just squeeze that in. Times how many dollars per hour is our standard rate for labor? The standard is to pay $10 per hour. So 220 times 10 is 2,200. The difference there is 440. Now, is this difference favorable or unfavorable? Well, I was supposed to pay them 10 bucks an hour. I paid them 12, favorable for them. And definitely, you know, I'm not uh, saying negative things about the workforce, but from a, just a purely a cost-centric mindset, this is unfavorable. We overspent here. Uh, SP remains 10. Now to get SQ, we say given the actual level of production, how much, how many labor hours should it have taken? So given the actual level of production, how many uh, uh, labor hours ought this to have taken? Well, we made a thousand buckets uh, and a bucket is supposed to take 0.25 hours. So a thousand times 0 0.25 this should have taken 250 direct labor hours. Now, because overhead is also based on labor hours, this is going to be my SQ for uh, direct labor for variable overhead. And yes, indeed, even for fixed overhead, that number is just gonna follow through because again, it tells me overhead is based on direct labor hours. So it's gonna be a useful number, that 250. So 250 times 10 is 2,500. Uh, 2,500 versus 2,200 gives us a variance of $300. Now, is this a favorable or an unfavorable variance? Well, uh, it should have taken us 250 hours. It only took us 220. We saved time. This is a favorable efficiency variance. Overall, 440U, 300F, we end up with a $140 unfavorable variance variance overall just making sure we remember these are dollar amounts did i put that over here missed a couple of dollar signs up here so to answer the question the company experimented using more senior staff and fewer junior employees this month was the experiment successful well we were more efficient no doubt about that but overall no i wouldn't call it a success we it was costly right it cost us some money to do this uh, i wouldn't recommend sticking with this labor mix going forward based on those numbers. Again, a million qualitative things would go into this type of decision, staff availability being chief among them, but uh, given the limited amount of information, if we just have an unlimited supply of labor, no, 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 this is not the premium mix that we were looking for. Uh, next, variable overhead spending variance. Okay, well, we uh, looking at the last bullet here, we know we spent 1050 on variable overhead, and uh, AQ is going to be the same as labor. It's, it's driven by labor. So uh, the le direct labor workforce worked 220 hours. Well, that's what drives our variable overhead. So 220 hours is our AQ. 220 times 
whatever our AP is to get that uh, amount of 1050. So uh, 1050 divided by 220 gives us 4.772, 4.773 actually. Okay, our AQ remains 220 here. Our standard price per hour. Go back up to the standard cost card for overhead. Oh no, it's $8 per hour, but that's variable and fixed. Uh, the manufacturing overhead rate of $8 per drag labor hour can be further broken down. The company estimates variable overhead to be $5. So again, $8 is the uh, overhead rate, $8 per hour. I should note that, $8 per direct labor hour. That's our uh, MOH rate. But of course, that's got some variable component and $5 per direct labor hour is variable MOH. And the other $3 per direct labor hour, it isn't said, but it's implied here, that's gotta be fixed MOH. Okay, so $5 per direct labor hour though is our variable overhead rate. 220 times five is 1100. The difference here is $50. I say to myself, is this favorable or unfavorable, this variance? Well, I should have paid $5 per hour. I ended up paying 477. I saved money, this is favorable. SQ times SP, well the SP remains five. The SQ, I mentioned this before, it's the same because it's based on direct labor hours, so it's the same as the one above. It's 250. Let's pull that number down. 250 times five. I get 1250. The difference here is $150. Now it should have taken me 250 hours. It took me 220. This is a favorable variance. And if it's a favorable variance up here, it's all about the labor hours. Well, it's gonna be a favorable variance here because it's all about the labor hours. 150 favorable plus 50 favorable, that gives us 200 favorable overall on variable overhead. Last, but certainly not least, is our fixed overhead budget and volume variances. Let's see. Um, I just want to read this last paragraph. The manufacturing overhead rate of $8 per direct labor hour can be further broken down. The company estimates over it to be $5 per direct labor, variable over it to be $5 per direct labor hour. And we said, well, fixed, then our SP is $3. That's going to come in handy uh, later. We know our SQ is 250 looking over there. It says the company expected to produce 1,100 buckets using 275 hours. I don't think we're going to need this. And based on those, variable overhead was budgeted to be 1375 a month. Okay, fixed overhead was budgeted to be 825. Okay, there's our fixed overhead budget, and we have our fixed overhead actual. We can do our first variance. We got our actual 800, we got our budget 825. Let's do that. Did I do that backwards? <laughs> our actual was 800 and our budget was 825. Okay, I was worried. It's the worst thing that can happen to me is I make a long video like this, I get to the end and I screwed up the last calculation, so I really wanted to double check. 800 versus 825, the variance there is 25, and I was under budget. This is favorable, right? I actually spent less than I budgeted to make. Now, our final variance is the volume variance. And this really does boil down to how many units we made versus how many units we plan to make. So I plan to make 1100 buckets. I actually made a thousand buckets. It means my fixed cost didn't have as far to spread out. So my fixed costs were inefficiently spread. This is going to be an unfavorable variance. To compute it though, I know my SQ is 250, I know my SP is three, let's do it, 250 times three. So again, SQ was 250, I take that from the labor one, SP was three, and that was just taken from my calculations on the side of the page there. This is $750, this is a $75 difference between applied and budgeted, and this indeed is an unfavorable variance. We spent and we were budgeted to spend more because we were budgeted to be busier. <laughs> we were less busy than we budgeted to be. This is an unfavorable variance. Overall here for fixed overhead we are 50 unfavorable. Okay, we have worked our way through a ton of variances and I hope 
this was a ton of help to you in solving variance problems. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye for now.